Well, welcome, folks, to uh, the Shattered Kingdom panel. Uh, if this isn't what you were looking for, then you guys lucked out because it's better than whatever you were looking for. <laughs> um, so I'll start by introducing myself. Uh, I'm Craig Royce, AKA Gremlin Grenade. I'm the uh, lead designer, the creative director, and the producer for the game. I'm Silva, I'm the art lead. Um, I'm Seventh Element, I'm the music lead. And okay, so seeing as this is our first announcement, I imagine a lot of you guys are wondering what Shattered Kingdom is. Um, basically, it is a uh, turn-based strategy game, a la Final Fantasy, Bill Curia, kind of those, those kind of games, um, a set where you play as uh, either the New Lunar Republic or the Solar Empire. Um, it's a really story-based driven game. Sorry. Um, it's. Prepared as hell. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, as I said, uh, basically it's an RPG set where you play as New, New Lunar Republic or Solar Empire. It's uh, really story based. So it follows more of a RPG style because uh, we had, weren't able to do multiplayer, so we thought we'd instead give you an experience that's really personal to each player. Um, there, so, sorry, not completely ready for this. Um, there's going to be multiple storylines, multiple endings, a lot of. Uh, like I said, player personality. Um, the overall plot of the game starts probably sometime after season three. It's not really set, it's just supposed to be now time in the, the canon. Obviously that's probably going to change as we can't keep up with the show. Um, but essentially, it, right after season three, uh, Twilight became an alicorn and everyone's still a little worked up about previous season's events, namely the Changeling invasion, because it's the first time in about a thousand years that anyone's actually invaded Equestria. It, up to that point, there'd been a lot of, you know, little excursions, there'd been things like Nightmare Moon Discord, but never a full-scale warlike activity. And uh, it's gotten a lot of them shaken up, um, namely uh, Cadence, because she was like the main benefactor for it, and uh, Princess Luna, who really just had been gone for a long time, when she came back, everything was softer. Everyone was weaker, so. Uh, um, av but they they let it go as they did in the show, and then the beginning of the game starts out with the changelings attacking again at that year's Grand Galloping Gala, and uh, the attack almost it, it almost gets to Luna herself. She ends up fending off the changelings that are in her area, but that's seen by a lot of the nobles as a personal attack on the princesses, and it's causes this whole kind of mess and chaos. And so what Luna decides to do is she ha initiates a militia. She's got like a call to arms to all the towns in Equestria, basically saying that she's forming a standing army. Um, but she doesn't really get permission from her sister to do this. And so Celestia is not really all that okay with it. She had been managing to keep the country safe for over a thousand years without having an army. She'd be able to use the element. She was able to use negotiation. She didn't have to go to war and she doesn't want to have to suddenly have to go to war just to become uh, safe, and she doesn't want to become a warmongering empire either. Um, so that uh, essentially that escalates until Luna has to break off. She flees to this uh, crystal empire and forms her own new Lunar Republic with Cadence, while Twilight and Celestia form, or they stay with the government and becomes known as the Solar Empire. Um, so, you're going to be playing as an important, but not all important character, currently without a name. Uh, we, we, it's kind of, their personality that we have set up for them is kind of like a Commander Shepard from Mass Effect, so we just call her Princess Shepard. Um, <laughs> um, and so you basically have to choose sides in the conflict. 
Um, you have to, you're going to have a lot of choices that are going to affect your allegiances. You're going to have followers who are going to make their decision based on your allegiances and either stick with you or stick with the side that they're loyal to. And uh, you'll even have the option to choose middle paths that aren't either New Republic or Solar Empire or even change sides halfway through the game, uh, assuming you play your cards right. Um, no, actually, let me wait. Let me think better. Okay. <laughs> uh, so. The environments that we're going to be going with in this game pretty much span over the whole of Equestria. We're going to be doing uh, places that are obvious that you know we have to have Canterlot, Ponyville, Crystal Empire, things that you'd really well know, as well as a lot of uh, cities that have been mentioned to either in the show or in the fandom but never really seen. We're going to have places like uh, uh, Stalingrad. We're going to have uh, we're planning on having Manhattan, uh, Philadelphia. Um, Possibly even the Changeling Realms, but that's that is a big maybe at this point. Um, and uh, that's probably screwed up. Um, yeah. That might be a good idea. I thought I would go with the characters and do a better choice with that. Well, there's a reason I want to wait to do that one. But uh, no, it's okay. So, uh, who wants to play it? <laughs> like everyone? Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, <laughs> I was going to have this become a vote by quiz, but I didn't drop any memes, so it doesn't matter. Um, so, I'll just do this like a dictatorship. Okay, who plays a lot of strategy games? So, let's go some movies. <laughs> I'll try not to. Hopefully. Everyone see the tax room. If we had to let our enemies stop us now, we'd risk our homes and our families. We cannot let our enemy win today. We must stop them here. <laughs> 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 Okay, I'll read off that. Uh, 
Celestia's armies ruled the whole of Equestria for over a millennium and its sole empress. Today we start on the path to a true equal society ruled by democracy, not by royalty. You are the finest group of warriors that have ever had the privilege of leading. Your skill will win the day so long as your hearts remain strong. Be strong, my soldiers. Make Equestria proud. To battle! You're gonna pick the side in the game. 
the weight. Yeah, this is just for the demos purposes. In fact, it's not going to be, you're going to have real choices in this game. It's not going to be black and white. Do I want to be good? Do I want to be bad? Do I want to be this side? Do I want to be that side? The, uh, I've been working with uh, the story. Uh, it's being written right now by Penstroke, actually. And uh, uh, he and I have been working on uh, getting it so that your initial choice is for what side you want to be on. I guess tell me Trying to get as much as true as we can. It's working here. Go ahead. Um, well, all that would be uh, Lunar Republic versus Firewall, and sometimes maybe even other factions. There are going to be other factions. Um, how many, or like, how, what to what degree is not determined yet, but there will be skirmishes against smaller groups. There will also be, uh, on that note, there will be characters, or we're planning on characters. This isn't confirmed yet, but we're planning on characters that aren't ponies to be possible for your army or as mercenaries. We have, uh, right now, we have dialogue and stuff for uh, a, uh, a diamond dog mercenary and a griffin mercenary, but we're not sure if we can get them implemented for technical reasons. Camera guy. Uh, is there any intention to uh, add mouse input? Or is it going to be all the things? Behave. There is. But it's it's tricky, basically. There is there it's it's fully my intent to get mouse input, but I'm also making sure personally and uh, that it that it's possible to play without a mouse. You know that it feels fluent and that it feels good. I, there is controller input available. So we had some trouble getting some ga gauges implemented beforehand. The way the turn system in this is going to be a little bit different than the actual thing. The actual turn system, you have uh, a set amount of actions for your entire army every turn, and that and any action is like it's anything. You can you can use these actions for movement. You can use these as actions for attacks. You can use a couple action points for uh, special abilities, but it's one pool for your entire army. Um, that pool increases with how many major characters you have, how many generals you have. But every individual unit also gets their own one or two points, so that if all your generals die, then you still can come back. Yes. That's the short answer, is yes. By all legal obligations, it's going to be free. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. As far as uh, our failsafe, essentially, we don't have a failsafe. We have a backup plan. Um, we we thought talked about getting uh, removing all the major characters and and anything that's copyrighted from the game to make it not uh, a legal issue. But you can't have a war between Luna and Celestia without Luna and Celestia. So it just what we decided to do is we have another story in the works that is currently less drafted up, but it's uh, without ponies in it essentially. So that if Hasbro comes down with Van Hammer, then we can, uh, we can keep working. Yeah, you. So, um, when characters level up, is it the individual characters? Um, the way it, um, um, it, it works right now, it's, uh, it's the individual characters, but the generic units aren't going to level up. So you have about six characters on each faction, of names, um, and, and personalities, and yada yada. You can talk to them, and uh, they'll level up. The rest of the army is just going to be something that you buy and use as can of hunter.
Thank you very much. This theme is done by uh, Captain Club Atom. The uh, music that played in the, back, the background before the battle started was played by uh, Radiar. And then uh, the battle theme that was playing during the whole battle was done by Seven Years. Um, we've had a lot of discussion about that, and it's not really finalized. Um, currently, we're planning on uh, there being permadeath situations for characters, but not through battles, through event sequences. So you don't, it's not Fire Emblem where you just restart every fight because your guys are dying, but uh, there might be choices that you'll make in the game where you have to choose between two characters' lives, or you have to choose between survival and maybe the morally right choice. Um, a lot of decisions like that. It's very story driven. Uh, actually, I didn't finish answering, or uh, with when I answered your question. Um, the choices in the game, like I said, aren't gonna be wholly binary. They're not gonna be really clear. Um, there'll be points where, like say you wanna do something that benefits the New Learn Republic, and you end up hurting it more because you know it's, it's not clear. That said, we're not going to like deliberately misinform you or anything, but you have to make actual decisions and choices rather than just kind of picking what you want. Um, hopefully that'll make it a little more immersive. Is there any questions in the back? We've got four guys up here who got all these questions. Uh, yeah, we're fine. Um, I'll start with you. Yeah. Uh, yes, loosely though, because uh, we're taking out a few cities just because it's huge, and we're adding a few because we really want Stallion Grad. <laughs> Go ahead. I have a question. Uh, will it be like that you can make uh, buildings with the Will there be engineering units, or will there not be engineering units? Uh, no, it's not planned to be like that. Okay. It's uh. It's very based off of uh, how do I word like a, a strategy game mentality as opposed to a tactics game mentality. Um, it's not so much StarCraft as it is Final Fantasy Tactics. Okay. But so um, could you equip the um, uh, some of your new units with more, like different kinds of um, gear and weapons? Um, we've been talking about it. Uh, it would be feasible to do that technology-wise, but we're not sure if we have the time to implement all the weapons and stuff. Um, but it, it's, that's a maybe. Second row guy. Okay. Uh, you've been mentioning how there, there are instances where you're going to have to make a choice, such as between survival and the moral right for mm -hmm. this character and that carrier, um, character. And are there going to be multiple endings rather than just you win as the Roman Republic or you win as the soldier? There's going to be quite a few multiple endings. You can. Uh, you can win as either faction. You can, uh, we, we've talked about having bad endings, like for example, with the New Lunar Republic, if you're too aggressive with your tactics and you, you raise every city you come down to and you execute all your prisoners, uh, you're gonna find Luna turning into Nightmare Moon. And, Spoilers. Yeah. Spoilers. Possibly, That's maybe. Cool. Cool. And uh, you may be, find uh, Celestia becoming the Tyrant Lestia on the other side or something along the line. Um, there's also going to be other, like I said, there's other paths rather than just picking one of the factions. There is um, one possible ultimate good, good ending. Yeah, let's, yeah, the title screen might have some hints on how to, how to do that one. No, no, I won't. Um, and there's also some endings that we can't even mention because they're not finalized, that but amazing. we're getting excited about it. <laughs> um, I'm going to go over there, far end, and work your way over. I'm far end, work your way over here. So, first you. Okay. Uh, in the actual tactics of fi 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 fighting, yep. would there be like stealth capabilities at all so that you, know, you don't always get seen and attacked if you go near them? That really depends on how tricky the AI turns out to be. Right now, it's really basic, and um, okay. it depends on how smart we can make it. Also, um, just on like, what, the thing about invisibility units and stealth units is it's a hard time conveying. Yeah. 
there's a hard time conveying that units are invisible without making it so the player can't see them. <laughs> right. But. Sorry, to your left. Or your right, my left. Oh yeah, I had a question. I played a couple games that are similar to this, and I saw something in them that I really liked. Hmm. Would the certain characters have relationships that if they're in the same vicinity might boost their stats or give them a special capability? Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> we can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah. Can <laughs> <laughs> hear that. Um, the, the plan is for that to happen, and possibly to the degree that you confer the action points, as I mentioned before, to other units around your city, so that you have the option to either spread out your major characters to make your whole army a little bit stronger, or put them all together and have one chunk of elite guys that can just carve through the enemies. Um, go ahead. I think the question that needs to be answered is, will this be playable in the game room? Not currently. <laughs> Actually, we didn't talk to them about that. No. Um, not currently. I'm going to talk to them about that now that you mentioned it. <laughs> that was a good idea. Um, yeah. um, so, is this going to um, after each battle, are you going to have like a world map so you can choose where you want to go, or is it will it be like event to event? There's going to be a world map. And in fact, um, later in the game, as you become more important in the war, and, and whichever faction you are realizes your value, uh, you're going to be given um, separate armies that you can set that you have to send off to battle. This is I from your own. So you move your group around the map, doing your individual missions. But between missions, you're going to say, "I want platoon one to take Ponyville, and I want them to." And you have, and then you give them specific list of orders, like I want them to uh, keep civilians safe, uh, store up all the food or something like that. We have some specifics, but if you get the idea. Um, and then if you send your specific characters to go with them, then they'll get some sort of bonuses that come in contact with armies. Um, yeah. Um, will there be other armies other than the uh, New Little Republic and the Solar Empire? Like. That's a tough question to answer. Um, there's going to be other enemies, and there may be other factions that you can join. Um, and there may be non-factions that you can create, but I don't want to go into detail about that because it's hurting anything about you. Okay, after the game is released, do you, do you uh, plan or at least consider to do uh, some kind of update, like uh, content patch, expansions, or like more than just bug fixes? We've talked about that. Basically, it's just way too early to tell. Um, so not everyone on the team is a professional developer. A lot of artists just are artists who really liked it and they thought the game idea was cool. Um, but not everyone wants to stay with us for three plus years. So it really depends on how much energy everyone has at the end of the game. Um, more likely than an update would be a sequel, or um, as we said before, you know, we have the backup plan of our own IP that isn't MLP, so that we don't have to worry about being sued. And if that's the case, we can make some money off of that. That um, might be the sequel. If this turns out that people like it, um, we will make something that's bigger and better, and, or we may make something bigger and better. I can't say for certain yet, but we're talking about making something bigger, better. That's that's uh, our own original property. Uh, so one second. Can everyone in the back hear me? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Two questions. Um, one which should be easily answered. Uh, so the main six, I don't see them sort of leaving Twilight Spark and so doing the whole friendship thing. Mm -hmm. uh, are they going to be a big part of the Solar Empire? Um, they're going to be split across factions. Actually, um, there was some debate about it, and the, the basically the fact of the matter was if we made a whole Solar Empire, they'd be too much of a powerhouse. I see feels coming. Um, there <laughs> are really yeah. feels coming. Um, but that said, there is a way to not have, not let their faction allegiances define their friendship. Okay. I'll just put it that way. Right there. I want to know, um, what do you think would be the estimated time of release so we could actually play this game? And if you run into troubles, with the company, is there any way we could read the story? That um, that depends on Hasbro, really, uh, because they have a tendency to just say that none of the stuff gets out. Um, we we've been really sneaky about 
some of this stuff. So if someone else were to leak the story, if we got shut down, then we wouldn't know or be responsible for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so, I cannot give you a release date, by the way. I, this is very, very early, early, early pre alpha. We've been working on this for a little while, but what happened was uh, we all had to link to it, kind of essentially. And uh, everything you saw here got more or less assembled in the last month. And these guys worked their asses off. That was great. Give you what you saw. Oh, really good. A lot of us are students. We had to have So we are really early in the game. The farthest thing along is the story, and uh, and even that is kind of tentative and being continuously reworked and rewritten. So uh, it's going to be a little while before it's released, but we're working on it and we're really enthused for it. Um, I'm going to move with the sure. uh, I'm just wondering, for the character that you start off with, Shepard, uh, is there any class customization of your choice of how you want to play in? I'm not sure what you mean. Like, during the panel, uh -huh. or during the like gameplay, it's obviously it. a wizard or whatever. Well, okay. okay. You're not, yeah, the main character will obviously be the most customizable. You, um, right now, it's an art issue that we can work out, but the plan is to have, uh, you be able to pick your races, possibly your, your gender. Very, very maybe ish to color, which seems like it's like that should be bad, but it's the hardest one to work out. Um, but that means that, you know, assuming that we can get to you can pick your race, that, that would affect your class type. But even if you can't, then yes, it's going to be a flexible character. It's not going to be class defined. Characters aren't going to have, like, it's not going to say uh, Ironheart, Valkyrie. It's just going to give them your stats and their abilities, and you just kind of figure out what you want to do with them. Um, partly because it's a personal uh, design class of your mind, but that gives players a lot more control because then they don't have to say this unit does this, they can figure out what the unit does and possibly come some variations. Right, go ahead. Uh, earlier in this presentation you said that uh, you're able to buy units. Mm -hmm. what's, what, what, um, like what's the currency system and like how does it work? Um, that's being looked at right now. Um, I mean, there's got to be a currency system for armor and whatnot. I'm not sure if that's going to be the same system for uh, buying troops or if you're going to be requisitioned things. Um, like, if you're just going to be given troops that work with it, and then you can requisition more. But uh, we don't know. Uh, you mentioned uh, different factions. Like, uh, there could be a possibility of performing like, alliances with different factions. Like, like, you said, like, depending on what actions you take in battle, like, whether you're more, like, brutal. Mm -hmm. Or like, just like, morally right, like, does that affect, like, if there are alliances, does that affect, like, with which like, army can take preference towards you, like, towards helping you, or that would be, like, discussed for you? Sort of. Sort of. Okay. Um, cool. Um, you will be able to, uh, affect individual characters, for sure. And, uh, you will, um, you, well, all right, as far as other factions being able to join you, as I said before, um, we're talking about other races being playable, maybe, but that's not certain. Um, like, it really depends on the faction, because you can have, if you're playing Solar Empire, for example, and you attack a town, and you don't, and you're, you're pretty gentle about it, essentially, it'll be a harder fight, but the enemy character, the enemy boss, might actually be more sympathetic to you. Um, I'm not certain that you'll get characters on the other side to join up with you. I will really have to figure that one out. But uh, but you can you can affect the opinions of other species. No, if you're talking about like diamond dogs just showing up and attacking you, they're not going to be your friends. They're just diamond dogs. Um, go ahead. Again, in the buying food thing, is there a possible way to fail so hard? All you have is your generals left and no money. We are really not far enough to figure that one out. <laughs> yeah, actually, that is a problem. Like, with Final Fantasy Tactics, I ran into that problem a lot. I progressed so far that I just hit it. Mm -hmm. And, like, there's a point where it saved, 
before I did a boss fight, it automatically did it. And so I tried to fight the boss and I couldn't go back and level up. So it's, it's, and so, so we'll watch I'd say you thought of that, yeah. yeah. Um, I already formulated some ideas of how to fix that. So. Uh, this is kind of like a question about the development team. Uh, how like how much difficulty does it take to make this game? Like that varies, and it's kind of hard to tell sometimes because it varies by department too. It varies by department, and it varies by, the department. The department, and it varies by the person because uh, we're working on this mostly through Skype, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. like something that takes one person months to do, someone else does very quickly. That said, everyone's on the team has been equally valuable because just because one person takes a long time to do it, their style is often very unique and valuable in that way. I mean, um, it really does show in the yeah, free output. So. Yeah. Um, it's a lot. I could say it takes a lot of work. It depends on like, uh, the platform and like, what you do this or that. Um, you go ahead. Um, in the course of the game, could you ever possibly run into the main six, and and could they fight for you? Yes. In fact, uh, it's likely, and uh, actually, yeah, I'm not going to say more than that, but it's likely that, you have, that you'll run into them, and it, it's likely that you can get at least, at least, some of them to fight for you. Uh, will there be any kind of stat management system for your troops? Um, sort of. Um, for your, like I said, for your name characters, when they level up, you can pick their skills. I think their stats, we, we're thinking that their stats are just going to stay consistent, but the skills are big when you level them up. Um, but, uh, yeah, so essentially. You back there. Um. <coughs> Um, what made you decide to do a story, a fan of this whole series supposed to doing something like that, the Nightmare and Hidden Moon back in the past? Um, mainly that we wanted to keep the main six in it. Because um, we, we've talked about that. We, we initially just thought, yeah, sure, the main six will be in it. And then, part way through it, we thought, oh, maybe we'll do it in the past, do the, the original Nightmare one more. And uh, the stories that we were creating out of having you know, camp characters were really good. We didn't want to ditch them. Um, and the art, the concept art we made was really cool, and they were just too cool to throw out. Um, also, because uh, that one has a predetermined outcome, and it's a, it would be a little less, I think, meaningful to the player. It's a lot more of an emotional experience if you run into characters that you know, and you have to see them go through this um, hardship and this war. Um, I was wondering, you said, so that could slightly change depending on if you leave certain people alive. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to keep those people prisoner for political, um, well, bartering or? It's going to be a really story-based mm -hmm. possibility. Like, it's not something that you can just pick enemies and take them as POWs. Mm -hmm. But there's, we're planning on sequences mm -hmm. where things like that happen. And uh, the second thing would be, is there anything if you get through this game? And you want to increase replayability. Is there any way you can get a strange kind of funny silent guilt ending? Like you try to play the guilt? Yeah, we've been talking about that. Um, it's, it's not certain yet. But we've been talking about it. Um, that's most, the, I'll say this. Um, the ending we've been talking about that isn't, I'm not going to elaborate on it because it's not even slightly confirmed, is a little bit darker in the, the Silent Hill ones in a way, but it's still kind of dark comedy. Yeah. All right. Um, will there be any like hidden secrets or Easter eggs? Yes. Okay. We're too stupid to not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's exactly. That's exactly. What it is. We're too stupid to not scatter this thing with Easter eggs. All right. This is. If you have not already included this, this is just an idea. What about side comments like uh, derpy? Or um, no, we have thought about it, and uh, basically they're not soldiers, so that's no. Um, we talked about the, we didn't have any concept or anything. Maybe we were really sketches about like characters like Octavia being thrown in there, but it's like Octavia's a chelist, not yeah. a soldier. Um, I mean, the I was just talking about units wise. I was just talking about them kind of being there. Kind of oh, like um, possibly. Again, just. 
like with implausibility, the chance of you running into these characters is really small, and it takes home place over a much larger scope. You're not going to be spending time in Ponyville like you would in a lot of other games that are coming up. Um, so it's possible. It's not. We we we've, we've talked about it. we have a point of decision, but we want to talk about it a little bit. Go really. uh, I want to elaborate more on the uh, map traveling. Mm -hmm. Will it be like mostly on the map, or will you explore legitimately walking through? Maybe do it too. Um, a little bit of both. I'm not sure what you mean. Sort of like you have to make your way. Um, the overworld, like between the cities, there may be battlefield battles between the cities, but you're not going to just kind of march your way all the way from Canada to Manhattan. Um, there is going to be the interior of the cities. Um, something that I wanted to do at the beginning, it turned out really easy technology-wise, was um, that the city you fight in is the city you play in, essentially. You don't, it's not one of those games where you uh, run into an event and it brings you to a separate instance map, you do a little fight and then you come back to the city. If you're in, uh, say, Ponyville and the other faction packs, then then you'll, all the houses that you've been walking in and out, talking to all the players, those are where can be your cover and those are where you know, your setting. Um, but between the uh, between the cities, it's not likely just to list. I'm not really going to Go ahead. Elaborating on the East Ring. Should I keep an eye out for uh, 1950s British police box anywhere, like around the corner? The well, thing about there. Easter eggs is they develop organically, so mm -hmm. we'll have to be like yeah. on a Doctor Who kick and maybe. <laughs> if that were to happen, it would be for someone to call someone else a racist pun based on Doctor Who, and then we go, let's throw that in the game. Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. They're a strange bunch, sleep deprived, and way over caffeinated. Um, I have a question. Um, so, if say if I were to fight um, a battle at Canterlot, mm -hmm. if I were to lose the battle, would I uh, just restart from the beginning, or would I actually like lose Canterlot? Depends on the battle. Um, for the most part, you'll probably restart. Um, that said, like if you send other troops to defend Canterlot later in the, the later stages, when you have your troops, you're sending them off to different cities. If they lose, then you lose Camelot. Um, if you lose, uh, we're talking about it, but most likely you'll just restart that way you don't lose all your guys, really. Go ahead. Uh, again, half that exploration. I was wondering, you mentioned how you could be in Camelot or Ponyville and suddenly the other, the enemy attacks. Is there going to be, aside for the main story, is there going to be random attacks where uh, we've been talking about it. Basically, we've been trying to balance whether or not this can play. Um, so we don't know. Uh, or that. Uh, I, I didn't obviously complete the Octavia battle as a musician, but yeah. is there a way to hire like mus uh, those musicians or uh, characters who don't help in battle to in instead of the battle increase like general troops' stats aside of like general mora morale of troops? Um, we have ideas of characters like that, not quite like guard type characters, more like uh, lieutenants, um, so that you don't have anyone who's straight up useless in a fight. Um, but again, that's really tentative, really early in, in discussion. Is there going to be a base cannon? <laughs> uh, there may be a cannon, but I'm not going to Party cannon? No, but I. I'm, I do want to mention this. Uh, we came, we got part way through it. So Equestria is a really weird place when it comes to technology, as I'm sure you guys realize. Yeah. Um, having developing a realistic dark story on a place where the only time technology is advanced is when it functions for a gag is kind of frustrating. But that said, um, Rainbow Dash has a turtle named Hank. She's mentioned being as fast as a bullet. And uh, what was the other? And he has one? like a like a like a helicopter rotor on his shell. Well, yeah, that's obviously you that one's bad though. But but there's you going, can there's gonna be some disparity in the technology, but there's gonna be some pretty cool stuff because of that. Um, I'm pretty excited about that. Anyways. <laughs> I thought I saw a question back here. Maybe someone just scratching. <laughs> that one we got that. Oh, right here. All right. On the question.
introduction of technology, will there be any sort of vehicles? Um, that's kind of <coughs> sort of. Um, first of all, obviously there's a lot of training in the question, but those aren't really functional as a military device because they only go from one place to another. Um, but they are functional as a flat device. Um, as far as other kind of vehicles, basically what's in a question is what you get. That said, like I mentioned, things have been mentioned that haven't been seen in the show, and we plan to take advantage of that. Um, we'll go this way, so we'll be first. Uh, along the back, have you ever played, say, the uh, Overbound series? No. Well, I was wondering, during the map exploration, is it going to be there instantly there, or is it going to be you see all the the, uh, what's the word? characters moving slowly. Um, that's honestly surprisingly enough an AI issue that we're working on. Um, I wanted it so that you could have them moving up their way in, but they're kind of too stupid to do that right now. Um, so I mean, they, they'll move towards you, but they move way too slow. So it really depends on uh, if we can fix that. Um, so that, that's a made but. Um, I don't quite remember what platforms RPG Maker can uh, compile to, but uh, you know which ones it can, and by extension, which ones are you going to be supporting? We're all using Windows. I think it's just Windows. Um, I think you might be, um, maybe with the newer version of RPG Maker, you might be able to run it in Wine for Linux, and you could probably boot camp it with Mac anyway. There's, there's a way. There's a way. It's, 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 um, and we'll, we'll look into that more. But we've been we've been kind of planning the expectations when we do the windows. And if we create our own defense, it will be a lot more focused on being uh, widespread. You go ahead. Me? Yeah. Uh, as that, that character right there, Fenris, um, is what what uh, what is he? Is he a diamond dog? Or is he a new race here? Okay, he's really. Uh, a very conceptual character, so if I elaborate on this, I kind of want it to be known that we're, he's not finalized. Um, Fenris is a diamond wolf. He's like, he's a diamond dog. They just call him a diamond wolf. He's really just a diamond dog. And he's an outcast of their society. He hired himself as a mercenary. Um, but, yeah, he's a diamond dog. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was wondering, just saying that your character started out as a unicorn or a corny or something, would you be able to go and control a different general or character for, say, if you're fighting on a Cloudsdale and you need to have a Nexus? Yeah. Um, Cloudsdale is something uh, specifically that we've been very uh, tentative about because we have to work in everyone being up there. It would be just a Nexus out there. We'd probably do something like airships, but uh, we don't know that we can. So, um, really, it'll be that the map is being defined to what your character can do rather than your character being defined to what the map can do. You go ahead. I guess when you're defending cities, rather than buying more troops, can you just buy like defensive measures for the city? We haven't talked about that actually. We're in the air. Do they have like realistic weaponry on here? Um yeah, it's really an art issue, but yeah, um actually over there. Oh, uh, I mean, realistic as far as they're going to be using spears, swords. They all, they all have their own weapons. At least the characters will. Um, it's really an art, but that's the plan. Also, on the question of that, whenever I was playing the free alpha and I was at the start, what was that sword for? Um, that's for starting the battle. That's for like, initiating. Uh, before you could have gone around, around and talk around to the talk troops, troops, see what their morale's like, maybe even you know find some extra goodies later. Yeah, I did that. We just didn't have an asset. Uh, this is more for like advice, but like for storyboarding, like what's the first thing you like to work on? Like the background, like the dialogue? Well, I'm not writing the story. Um, the pen strokes write the story. Um, well, yeah, but he, he, I don't get how he does it. <laughs> Pinstroke he, Pony's a mystery. He's a bit reflective about it, but uh, he essentially just does things 
one bit at a time. You just those little sequence rather than having it all live. Um, so it's, it's kind of hard to question the answer. Um, okay. um, could we expect to see Luna or Celestia in a fight? You will. That's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> that will be very, very cool. Very, very cool. All right, this is kind of not really about the game, but will you be looking for volunteers for story writing and stuff? Um, now you mention it, yeah, okay. Um, I'll kind of segue into that. We we have a well-set team, but it's not huge, and it, it's tens of people have to leave. From. We have an artist who is in Finland, and they are conscripted service, and he's going to have to leave next month for that. So we're so, doing all the environments. Yeah, so all these beautiful environments. <laughs> um, so, uh, we are looking for more people, so um, what you can do, right now it's, it's really broken, but if you log on to alicorngames.blogspot.com sometime within the next week, we should have a place for you, or if you email, send an email to alicorngames.gmail.com, and uh, if, you, if you're interested in joining, and I'll, I'll Or you can probably you find one of us on DeviantArt, that doesn't work. That's it's, uh, I am quite, since... I am an amateur story writer, and I'm quite interested in trying to help out this project. Cool. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Are you going to be doing open beta tests for this game? Um, the thing about that is, maybe. We're so far away from beta, it's really hard to tell. Um, we'll figure that out when we get to that. Exactly. I mean, it, it, it's really a good idea to have, to have widespread QA testing. And uh, considering our marketing strategy, it's kind of a good idea, but uh, we don't know. Yeah, go ahead. Um, if someone wants to like submit an idea but doesn't necessarily want to volunteer, you can have like a forum or a form or something for these people to submit just an idea. Um, now you mentioned, yeah, we. Setting up a forum is not set up yet. Um, it was, that's really not what his function was, but I suppose you can do that. Well, we can set up a, a room for, uh, suggestions. for suggestions. Well, we are going to set up a forum for, or what we're planning to. It's kind of technically difficult, but what we'd like to do is uh, have essentially a chart for each. Like, we want to make this in public play, actually, because that's what NLR really Solar Empire is fun for, is getting your little heated arguments turn into a game. Um, but we can't really support multiplayer functionality, so the next best thing is to have on our website uh, a sort of competition there where you get to a certain point and uh, we're trying to find a way to fail this so people don't cheat, but essentially you tell, you set, you uh, post uh, a chart on a poll that you won X number of fights, you lost X number of fights, and then we compare the percentages. Perhaps, maybe instead of making the whole game multiplayer, you just have kind of like a player versus player battle where you just stick your armies in like a map together. Um, we thought about doing that too. Um, my plan, you mean area. Um, the thing about it is that I don't really want to do that. It's a civil, it's, it's <coughs> not always just uh, network issues. Even before we knew we were using RPG Maker, it's just not knowing how to do that. Or even what about perhaps a hot swap? So you and your friend sitting at your computer back and forth. You could do that, um, possibly. I think. I don't know. If, we have, if you're using we, the same computer, we, it's doable. But. It's doable. We have we we talked about multiplayer when we just started up. We said, and uh, a programming team who we don't really have anymore said, uh, let's not do multiplayer. And I said, well, what about these little things? They said, don't talk about multiplayer until we're done with the game, the core of the game. And so that's. That's actually right. my answer to that. Since we're focusing on the oh. single player experience, we really have to focus on the single player experience. So yeah. We'd rather make that really good and then have, mm -hmm. the, have two semi botched really, things. <laughs> we're really focusing on the uh, single player experience. It's intense and personal as we get. Um, maybe a bit cool to me and say this, but the story we're getting, working out on is really cool so far. I'm willing to bet that most of you will cry at least one point. <laughs> <laughs> It's at least. Cool. I've, I've never tried to work with fiction in the past like eight years, so please make me cry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, green hair. Yeah, you. The last one. Um, does Luna have anybody to fight for? Because I know Celestia does, but you didn't want that. Huh? 
Um, you mean like your own army? We wanted to make it as complex and hard to answer as it could, so it's hard, it's hard to answer. <laughs> There's a bit of political drama stuff yeah, going on. Really, that's really all it is. It's just about um, different political ideologies between the ponies and having to decide whose side are they on, really. So, so really, okay. Luna and Celestia will be fighting for whoever sides with them, basically, because they're people. Basically, yes, she does. Um, here you are. Uh, in the event that you don't get uh, get the chance to use Luna and Celestia, would you do? Uh, would you instead replace them with uh, their male counterparts, Solaris? <laughs> <laughs> that's R sixty four. Oh, that's a little <laughs> um, I don't know. I haven't really thought about that, but probably not. Um, as I mentioned before, we're basically just going balls of steel on this. We're either taking this IP and running with it as far as we can, or we're going to start <laughs> shut down and starting over. Obviously, we'll have to start over all the way, but we're not going to pull any punches. We're just going to hope that that works out. Go ahead. So the story starts with the um, Changeling invasion, right? And so like, uh, that's when Luna separated and made the New Lunar Republic. What happened to the Changelings? You'll find that out. <laughs> Spoilers. Yeah. I guess you kind of already find out if you've read the comics. Um, we're going somewhat off of that storyline. We're, we're not we're not branching off of it, but we're following that canon to some degree. If it conflicts with ours, then essentially that's what we're doing. Um, so, so yeah. We have three minutes. We'll wrap this up. Uh, all right, a few more questions. Up. I'm just curious. Do you already have a good story based idea of which of the main states will join each faction, or do you need to still help write it? Um, we've had a lot of discussion about it. Um, we have certain characters set in stone, certain characters aren't. Um, so, sort of, but we are we're working on it. We were working it out. I suppose we could set up a suggestion for that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, who's the one who, like, initiated the whole conflict? I I was the one who started this thing like from scratch. I have been on another team that we got we didn't even get to this state. We didn't release and uh, then it crashed. No, everyone spread apart and I was pretty devastated. And I tried speaking up from scratch. I lucked out so hard with these guys. Um, uh, Silpo was the first, second person to join. My first person was one. Um, <laughs> you were the first person I contacted, and like I, I, I sent out a bunch of emails to people on DeviantArt, and I was like, let's just see if I can get a game together. And people started responding right away. So like, what could you say was the reason why the other one played? Like, like just like the right future. Um, I have been studying that a lot. Essentially, poor management. Um, the guy who we had producing it. He did. He was a good programmer, but he wasn't a very good producer. A good Korean producer, so it worked out. Um, also, there was a lot of internal drama, and we've been snuffing that, and we've been snuffing drama out that in this game, but it hasn't really risen very much. So, I'm pretty chill with each other. Yeah. yeah. Oh, as far as uh, what came up with the idea, essentially, I just saw a demand for people to want to play these two factions. Personally, I don't have a favorite faction between them. Republic and the Solar Empire, most of us don't do. Um, we made the game because people want this game to be made. I go on to YouTube videos that have like music made for them. They're, they've got their rallying cries and their OCs and their role playing, and, and there'll be people who are like, someone needs to make a game of this, or someone will make theoretical music for a game exactly like this, and everyone's like, this game needs to exist, and I was like, alright, let's do it. I have two questions. One is my about my previous question about volunteering. Is there an age limit on volunteers? Um, we have high school students in here. We have college students, graduate students. Oh, um, we're a bit crass in our chat room, so I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're old enough to like have the skills, you're probably old enough to put up with our nastiness. Of course, it turns out to me. I mean, 
Also, my second question. Actually, I forgot my second question. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to wrap this up. Yeah. Okay. Um, 